Hello, welcome or welcome back to the Yarn and Yarns YouTube channel. My name is Angela and all of the places you can find me should be linked in the description box below this video. Here on the channel you'll find me chatting about my adventures in knitting, spinning, crochet, weaving, all of the fibre related things. Welcome today, it's my monthly roundup video so today I'm going to be chatting about all of the things that I finished and worked on throughout the month of September. I'm a little bit late <laughs> getting this video up we're approaching mid-October already but I've had a busy month so far and we actually got to go and do a little bit of family visiting so I got to go and visit my brother and squish my brand new little niece for the first time she was born back in May but we were making sure everyone was double vaccinated and stuff like that before we decided to travel and meet up so yeah it's been a bit of a whirlwind start to October and I just haven't found that much time to sit down and record so I hope you will forgive me but I do have plenty to share with you so I hope you will settle in whether it's your first time or you've been here many times before you're most welcome and I hope you enjoy the content and if you do I would love for you to consider either to like the video subscribe to the video um, if you want to support the content that I make you'll find links to both my coffee and patreon below okay let's get stuck in I have knitting spinning and some crochet to share with you this month and I also received a super wonderful gift and so I have a small acquisition segment at the end to share with you too. I'm going to start with knitting because I'm wearing one of my finished objects and it's a really warm day <laughs> here for mid-October in Wales and I'm not sure even though this is just a four ply weight jumper I'm not sure how long I'm going to be able to keep it on because I'm already overheating. <laughs> So I will chat about my project and then there might be a quick outfit change. <laughs> so I have finished my Aliba Linde top and obviously it's a bit difficult to see the whole top. I'm sat down, um, but if I remember, I'll take a little video to insert at the end of this little segment so that you can see the top in its full glory. I have been working on this for the last two years. <laughs> Um, well, to be fair, it's that languishing in a project bag for quite some time. It was one of my 12 cast-ons from not the last year, but the year before. And yeah, it just sat languishing for a while. I'd convinced myself that the pattern was more involved, was trickier, more time consuming than it actually was. And that's kind of what put me off picking it up. But over the last couple of months, I've been pretty much working exclusively sweater-wise on this project and it's finally done. But <laughs> the end was not without its troublesome adventures, <laughs> let's say. I think you might remember if you've been here for a while and watched some of the previous videos, I had some issues with the neck, which I had to fix. And I'd done that by the end of last month. And I think I just had some sleeve knitting to finish. Um, it's a lovely pattern, which has a, a little bit of stocking out at the top. And then it has this sort of lacy, cabley it's not really lacy it's cabley uh, pattern all the way down the bottom of the sweater and that uh, cable pattern is reflected on the bottom of the sleeves too and I knit this from some yarn that I picked up at a festival quite a few years ago it was actually my first indie dyed sweater quantity of yarn that I ever purchased and the dyer is Mahudli, who I think sadly isn't dyeing at the moment, but it's this beautiful um, sort of swampy slushy green, <laughs> as I like to call it. It's not very flattering, but I'm not um, particularly adept at s describing colours beautifully. Um, so for me, this is sort of like pond scummy slushy green <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> and to go with it, I purchased a mini skein or maybe two mini skeins, I can't remember now, um, of a different colour to do contrast um, neck bands and there's also contrast rib at the bottom um, that was a modification it wasn't part of the pattern but I've done it a few times on other sweaters and I really like for a sort of solid or a semi-solid I really like that sort of contrast and the fact that it gives a little bit of something interesting for the eye to, to look at so yeah I finished the sleeve I blocked the sweater and as is common for superwash yarn, this is a superwash merino nylon blend, the yarn stretched, but this one really stretched. <laughs> and I don't mind the extra ease in the body. In fact, this is almost like my perfect 
a slouchy round the house sweater um, but on the sleeves they were just absolutely humongous and I think I've got some footage I hope I've saved it and I hope I'm remembering right that I did actually record it but I've got some footage of the sleeves and how my arms were completely swamped in them so if I still have that I'll pop that in here um, and you can see that I think I ended up with almost 30 centimeters I think it was too much length in the sleeves which is absolutely crazy and I am denied about what to do about that for quite some time because this is a sweater that is for the most part knit in the round and then you split and knit flat at the top um, and then you knit the sleeves in the round and then from the bottom up and then you set them in you sew them in afterwards if this had been a entirely plain sleeve I think I would have been quite happy to actually just roll the sleeves up and make them super cozy but because it had this um, textured pattern at the bottom if I was going to be rolling the sleeves up and over that that would just be a complete sort of waste of a detail and I think this is a really nice detail about this pattern so I didn't want to lose that so my options were to either unpick my seaming of the sleeves and really undo a whole bunch of my knitting and knit back up again to a shorter length or the option that I went with was to actually cut my knitting and I did a rapid decrease so the inside of my sleeves look a little bit strange because in order to compensate for the number of stitches at the bottom versus the number of stitches that I needed to join the sleeve back to I had to do a rapid increase to get the stitch count to line up so I'm going to try and hold my arm up it's probably not going to show super well maybe I think this sleeve is a little bit of a better indication uh, this sleeve hasn't blocked out quite so well as the other sleeve so let me just swing the camera around a little bit but I think you can see here I've got almost sort of like a bat wing um, going into quite a tight fitted sleeve so not the most attractive of modifications however this is going to be sort of like under my arm so no one really notices it and I was much happier to spend a couple of hours on each sleeve snipping, re-knitting and um, grafting the sleeves back together than I would have been to unpick the whole sleeve, knit it again, re-sew it in and then also potentially have the same stretching problem. Like it would have been quite difficult to, to judge exactly how much I would have needed to take out and then re-block the sleeve it was going to stretch again so that it just seemed like a bit too much for my brain to handle <laughs> so the lesser of two evils was to snip into my knitting and to do those decreases to match up the uh, stitch counts and then to graft it or stitch kitchener stitch the sleeves back together and I think that worked out okay you can still just about see where I've um, kitchenered the sleeves However, I think over time that's going to block out, stretch out and it will be not noticeable at all. You can hardly notice it on the camera and also where I rejoined the sleeve was around about my um, elbow crease. So it sort of somewhat gets disguised in that sort of part because, um, you know, most oftentimes you're not sitting around with your arms sort of sat, stretched right out straight. So yeah, that sort of join sits in my elbow creases nicely and sort of disguises the fact that um, it's not as perfect <laughs> it's not as neat um, as the rest of the sweater now why you might be asking did this sweater stretch quite as much as it did well I've been thinking about that and I think the reasons for that are twofold the first one is that this sweater is the Aliba Linde, did I mention that? Um, it's from an older issue of Pom Pom magazine and for the last couple of years um, Pom Pom have been much more size inclusive than they were previously and because this is a pattern from an older issue of Pom Pom I think the biggest size is a size 52 inch chest and that's 50 to 50 well 48 to 52 is kind of the range that I knit um, size wise for myself depending on how much negative positive ease that I want or I feel like in that sweater and when I cast this on a couple of years ago at that point I'd really only knit a couple of sweaters which just 
I've got a whole pile of hand knit sweaters now, so um, <laughs> that idea seems a little bit out there to me now. At the time, as I say, I was quite new to sweater knitting, so I tried to compensate for the fact that I thought this sweater wouldn't have quite the same amount of positive ease as recommended in the pattern by going up a needle size. However, I think when I cast this on uh, a couple of years ago, what I didn't realise about myself at that point, and no, I didn't swatch because that's just me. <laughs> so yes, I brought a lot of these problems on to myself. <laughs> but what I didn't realise about myself is that I am a slightly looser than average gauge or average knitting pattern uh, knitter. So the extra size of the needles plus my looser gauge meant for quite a loose fabric and obviously once you get your knitting wet and even just lying it out to block flat just really loosened up that fabric even more which added to the stretch. Um, the other thing that added to the stretch I think is the lovely sort of cable -y pattern. It was again partly because I'm knitting this on a slightly larger needle at a slightly looser gauge but it really opened up and really pulled the fabric down so I think a combination of those two things led to the knitting stretching as much as it did and as I say for the body I'm actually really happy with quite a lot of positive ease I have slowly over the last couple of years since I've really embarked on sweater knitting been trying to get to the point where I have only hand knit sweaters in my wardrobe and I have got quite a few now that I wear regularly and all the time but I have this one store-bought sweater it's a really oversized black just like a back acrylic sweater and it's wearing really thin <laughs> in a lot of places now but it's kind of like my cover-up it's like my transitional piece so for this time of year where in the day like today it might be warm enough to wear a t-shirt um, but as the sun sets and the evening creeps in it gets cooler and I often find myself grabbing that black sweater as just a sort of light cover-up layer for my arms and just to give me that extra sort of feeling of comfort and coziness and a little bit of extra warmth and I think the fact that this body grew so much is going to mean this will become my cozy comfort um, transitional sweater because it's got that same feel it's got so much um extra ease to it it will become my yeah my cozy comfort knit and wear so yeah that's a Lee Belinde and I've spoken chatted about this project for quite some time now not sure how long we're at 10 plus minutes already so <laughs> apologies for that but I obviously had a lot of waffle <laughs> about this sweater so yeah hopefully now you shall see um a little bit of footage of what the sweater looks like um, on me Okay, so yeah, I hope you're able to see the sweater. The light's a bit um, strange here today and also apologies for the messy background. This room, as always, needs a damn good tidy up. <laughs> but I haven't got time to do that today and record, so I'm talking to you rather than tidying and organising. <laughs> so let's move on. I have got some other finished objects to share with you and I think they're all socks. So I have been knitting both socks for Socks for West Midlands Ambulance and also for our Gnome Along. So let me show you the socks that I've knit for the West Midlands Ambulance Service Sock Appeal first, socks for WMAS. And I've been keeping them all in my lovely Robin project bag from the lovely Emma of Eldenwood Craft. And that was because I knit a pair of socks from the Robin colourway from West Yorkshire Spinners. Oops. There we go. So I needed a pair of socks to knit um, when I went to meet a lovely friend of mine for a little outdoor knitting date. And so I grabbed some yarn that was in a package sent to me by the lovely Caroline. There were a couple of balls of leftover uh, West Yorkshire Spinners yarn. And so I decided to, the balls were slightly different weights. So I decided just to cast on, knit a tube. Um, that way I could match the 
sort of yarn up the striping pattern and then cut into my tube afterwards to finish my socks and I used a lovely contrast red skein that has recently been donated by the lovely Angela so thank you for that Angela. I ended up reversing the stripe pattern on these because when I finished my tube I wanted to obviously maximise the amount of yarn and therefore the size of the sock that I could knit and I wasn't able to match up the pattern on both socks which I like to do as often as I can so I ended up um, completely reversing so if I turn this upside down the striping sequence actually goes um, sort of in the, the same way so yeah I tried to make them the same but slightly different so that they were obviously mismatched rather than um, to tr make it look like I just kind of made a mistake and not knitted the yarn correctly if that makes any sense whatsoever <laughs> so that was the first pair that I finished and then the lovely Charlie of uh, Charlie Button Yarns and Cranky Lady sent me back some of the yarns that I sent to her to crank up into sock tubes and I want to say a big thank you to the lovely Louise and to the lovely Mary who both said that they were able to take on some of those sock tubes so they will be adding heels toes and cuffs to some of those socks for me which is a complete blessing so thank you both for agreeing to donate some time and do that but I obviously kept some of the tubes here myself and I have turned the first couple into two pairs of socks um, so I think these yarns may have been again donated by Caroline but um, I'm kind of losing track we've had so many wonderful generous donations I'm kind of losing track of who sent what yarns but anyway I have this really fun um, pair of socks and I used some blue yarn for contrast toes and cuffs and I used a little bit of lovely orange left over for the heels because I run out of the blue. The blue is actually slightly thicker than the sock yarn and I have a feeling although it was in my sock yarn basket that it might have been a DK rather than a fingering weight yarn um, but it's okay they make for nice squishy cuffs and toes and a perfectly lovely pair of socks. So that was sock pair number two and then the third pair that I finished for West Midlands Ambulance this month are again these lovely um, autumnal colours. I really like this colourway. Gorgeous. And I used some lovely bright green for the contrast heels toes and cuffs on those so that's three lovely pairs to donate and go in the donations box I'm slowly collecting um, more socks to fill up a box so that I can get them sent off to Jeanette if you are making socks for that appeal and you plan to send them through to me to box them up and send them on to Jeanette and I would love um, to be able to receive your socks and show them off here on the next Socks for um, Womass video so yeah if you're knitting and you want to send them via me then I'd love to show off the lovely work that the community are doing uh, but I would probably I will need the socks by the very end of November so um, in the next month to six weeks so that I can get them to Jeanette in plenty of time um, and then I also finished my gnome socks which I think I shared as a work in progress last month um, so here they are so these are for our gnome make along which is still going until the end of October um, you still have plenty of time to join in we are making all things gnome related, um, knit, crochet, needle felting, sewing, like anything gnome related um, that you want to include in that make along, then please feel free to contact me in some way with your finished object photos. We have a hashtag on Instagram, which is YNY gnome cow we have a finished object thread over in the Ravelry group if you're able to use Ravelry and if you're not using either of those platforms then feel free to email me at um, yarn and yarns at yahoo.com with your finished object photos and I'll put everyone in the pot for the prize draw at the end of October uh, so yeah these were a super fun project I used the new West Yorkshire spinners um, seasonal colourway the vintage tinsel for the main colour of my socks and then I just used scraps and bits and pieces of various yarns to knit the gnome colour work panel and I got the gnome chart from a free pattern that I found on Ravelry the name is escaping me but the details will be linked below and one of my lovely friends has asked for a pair of these socks and I did sort of knit these for myself or that was the intention but we have very similar size feet so I may send this pair off to my my lovely friend and then knit myself a, another pair in the future 
um, because yeah this was a really really fun project <laughs> I have one more bit of knitting to share with you. Uh, this one is the only project that's left as a work in progress. I, if I'd have been able to record this at the beginning of October, I would have had two projects to share with you as works in progress. Uh, but one of them is now finished and I want to save that for my next wrap up uh, because technically I finished it in October. Uh, so yeah, the passage of time has scuppered that slime somewhat, but you know, I have plenty to talk about anyway, so. After I finished working on my Aliba Linde sweater, I wanted to move on to the next sweater in my works in progress pile. And I'm really trying to focus in on those 12 cast on projects from last year to see if I can get as many of those finished as possible before the end of this year, and um, before I cast on my new 12. <laughs> so there were various points in September where I wasn't able to work on the Aliba Linde because I was waiting for the first sleeve to block to make sure that I'd got um, the length and everything right and then I was waiting for the sweater itself to block and yeah just things like that. So I switched to working on my Ursa sweater and Ursa is a pattern by Jacqueline Seaslack and I am knitting mine in this lovely um, sort of aubergine -y, purpley colour. This is Sublime Willow yarn, I believe. It's sadly a discontinued yarn, so I won't sort of dwell on those details. But yeah, I picked this up and as you can see, I have got to the point where I have split for the sleeves and I've um, joined in the round. So the last time you saw this project, um, it was up here. So I've got my lovely um, numbered wooden stitch marker there and I was still knitting flat. So for this project, you knit flat until you get to the point where you're down to the bottom of the V, then you join to work in the round and you're working across the whole body and the um, arm at that point. Um, and then you split off for your sleeves. And I'm just, I've j literally just done that. Um, so I'm just working around the body now. This is a cropped sweater. So I think it should, not take me too long to get this finished. I need to actually try this on again. Um, Jacqueline Seasack's patterns are fabulous. There's loads of information in there for making adjustments for your arm size, for your bust size, and there are directions to include bust darts for those of us with uh, fuller busts. So I need to try this on to see where I am in terms of is this now yet hitting the the fullest point of my bust do I need to add my darts in yet or do I need to carry on knitting down a little bit I suspect I may need to carry on um, down a few more rows before I'm ready to put those bust darts in um, but yeah that's the project or the sweater project that I'm hoping to be concentrating on most throughout the month of October and I reckon with a bit of a push I might get this fit this sweater finished by the end of the month which would be absolutely fabulous if I can uh, so yeah, I think that's everything for knitting. On to crochet. I have a teeny tiny crochet segment to share with you this month. And you might remember that last month I decided to work a crochet project for our gnome along. And I picked a pattern called Bunny in a Gnome Hat, which I found on Ravelry. And again, um, information will be linked below. They will be links for Ravelry. Um, but if you if you are particularly interested in the patterns, then do let me know and I will try and see if there are any ways to access them off Ravelry if you're no longer using Ravelry. But my gnome is finished and here he is. <laughs> he may be just the cutest thing. Yeah, not tons to say about this project. I think last month I had the body finished and maybe some of the other bits and pieces started, but yeah, just a really sweet pattern and I had lots of fun making it and it was really nice to crochet again. It took me a little longer than most people um, would spend to make a project that's only a few inches big. But as I've mentioned many times before, crochet and my hands and wrists don't always play nicely together. So I just took my time and made this over uh, the span of a few weeks, just doing little bits and pieces here and there. I used two yarns from my scrap basket in the end to finish this project. The body is made from a leftover skein of pip colour work from Bar Amie and the hat and the arms are 
a slightly different shade of grey um, but very similar kind of yarn again another leftover from my scrap box and it is Rowan Valley Tweed which is a lovely four ply a British produced yarn and yeah one of my favourites the Rowan Valley Tweed it comes in a lovely set of colours and yeah it's just a real pleasure to work with so yeah <laughs> The hat was quite big, or it looked, my hat looked like it was much bigger than the pattern. Um, I'm not sure if that was my change of yarn, although I don't think so, because as I say, these yarns are very similar, or whether over the sort of span of working this project, I just became a little bit more relaxed and didn't crochet quite as tightly. Um, but in the end, I think that worked out quite well. It looks quite cute. And I have sewed a couple of French knot eyes under the hat, but you can't really see them. The other thing that I did that wasn't part of the pattern is I've actually sewn down the back of the hat because the hat is, as I say, a little bit on the large size. I was a bit worried that over time the hat might become lost. So I've just tacked it down at the back. So you still get that nice sort of loose brim at the front, but yeah, it shouldn't be going anywhere and it shouldn't get separated from my lovely uh, gnome over time. I used a tiny little scrap of um, Briggs and Little that was kindly sent to me by the lovely Judith to um, cut a few strands off that because I really liked this um, dark sort of charcoal -y gray color with the rest of the gray for the gnome. And I just used my uh, flicking brush for my spinning to comb it out to give it a nice fluffy um, appearance and texture. So yeah, that's everything for crochet this month. And the last making segment is spinning. I have quite a bit of finished hand spun yarn to share with you, which for me is really exciting. A big spin has come to an end and I also managed to finish, managed, <laughs> managed. Oh, honestly, the recording of this is not going smoothly. I forgot some of the bits I wanted to talk to you about. I've just had to change my battery. It's getting warmer and warmer up here, even though I've got the window open. It's going to be one of those episodes, one of those. Anyway, spinning. So, yeah, I've got a couple of pins, uh, a couple of spins, not a couple of pins, a couple of spins to share with you. Uh, I'll start with the spin that you probably haven't seen before. If you have been following the channel for a while and since the beginning of this year, you may remember that at the beginning of the year, I set myself some spinning goals to spin through some fibre that I've had in my fibre stash for quite some time. And I pulled out a whole bunch of braids that had some kind of special meaning to me because they had largely been gifted from lovely friends. And I've been sat kind of hoarding them and not wanting to work with them for fear that I might spoil them. But I sorted them out onto my fibre cart, which is over in the corner. Let me just swivel you around slowly. I think you can see, ignore the mess, but I think you can see that lovely fibre cart in the corner. So yeah, I filled up that cart with the intention of any time I wanted to start a new spin, I could pull something off that cart. I've gone a little bit off piste, as I suspected that I might, and I haven't really spun too much from that cart because other things have crept in. But I'm happy to say that two of the finished yarns that I've got to share with you are from that cart and one of my works in progress is also from that cart. So I'll start by sharing the spin that you may not have seen before. And it's this amazing, glorious, brightly colored skein of yellow and green yarn. And I spun this from some Rolags that were a lovely gift from my dear friend, Caroline of Colorful Creativity. And I know that Caroline blended these Rolags that she gifted me herself and they were part of my advent calendar. I spun them up and I chain plied them I, all on my e-spinner and I haven't weighed this skein yet, um, but I have measured it and there's about 352 meters here on this skein of yarn. So as I mentioned, yellows and greens with some gorgeous sparkle in there. I don't have any particular project in mind for this yet. So I think this one might just ruminate in my stash for a little while and wait for the perfect project to come along but it was an absolute joy to spin and how special that uh, Caroline gifted me some Rolags that she had blended and made herself because now having my own blending board I know what sort of work that that entails so yeah thank you so much Caroline and this was an absolute joy to spin uh, I'm really pleased with the 
three ply that I got from this because it's probably one of my most fine three plies that I've spun to date. So yeah, really happy with that and it was just, yeah, really, really fun spin. The next spin that I have to show you is also one off of my cart and this <laughs> project was a work in progress at the end of last year and you may remember I was spinning a glorious set of Rolags from Spindle and Stitches and my cat Newt attacked my singles so I had been spinning this on my Turkish spindle and I had a whole bunch of little nests of fibre waiting to be plied and I came down one morning and they were strewn all over the living room floor. In all fairness to my lovely cat she doesn't often attack my projects and I think she was possibly more interested at the start in the crinkly bag that they were being stored in and then obviously she managed to fish some things out of the bag and just went to town with them. So I needed to ply this yarn but I'd kind of not fallen out of love with it but I, it was kind of on the back burner because yeah it just was not a smooth running project but anyway I bit the bullet and I managed to, to salvage as much of the singles as I could and I have a whole collection of mini skeins in lovely pinks and browns and again I've chain plied this so it should make a roughly self striping yarn and yeah I'm glad to have it finished it really didn't take that long once I set my mind to it but yeah I'd just been languishing because of the accident <laughs> that the fibre had um, encountered so yeah. So I've bundled these all together the reason that I kept them all as tiny mini skeins is because of the cat attack <laughs> these got slightly jumbled up and if I do want to knit them in any sort of self striping order then I might have to do a bit of yarn management and figure out what colours what the colour sequence is and how to knit them together so yeah I've just left them all as little mini skeins and we'll figure that out once I go to knit the project up. So I've got approximately 100 metres here and I think this was about 50 grams of yarn and the original fibre was some lovely merino. Uh, so yeah, this was the gelato colour Rolags from Spindles and Stitches. And another one off my spinning cart, which is really exciting. But my biggest finish spin, and if you've been following for the last couple of months, you'll probably already have guessed what this is. I have finished my John Arben fibre that I started back for the Tour de Fleece this year. And I had 500 grams of this beautiful fibre from John Arben to spin through. This was a Wonder Wall special. It's a blend of Exmoor Blueface, Blueface Leicester, Wensleydale and Silk. Took me a moment to re recall of the, all of the fibres and yeah, it's finished. And it's made for some absolutely beautiful yarn. Now, unfortunately, I didn't get quite as many metres as I had hoped to. This has come out to my standard sort of sport DK kind of thickness, but the fibre is quite dense. It's not that it's not soft and drapey, because it actually is. Um, if I just hold up one of my skeins here, you can see it's drooping <laughs> quite nicely. So there's no sort of stiffness to it at all. But I guess maybe there was just something in the blend perhaps that was quite a heavier fibre or just something in the spinning. I tried to keep the um, spinning quite light so as not to make the uh, finish yarn too ropey. The Wednesday Dale is a long wool which doesn't need too much twist. Um, BFL is kind of a medium type fibre and I'm, I'm not really sure about Exmoor Blueface but yeah there's quite a few things in here um, that have different staple lengths and things like that which has obviously contributed to the density of the yarn. So I've ended up with around about a thousand meters, which for a lot of people would be absolutely adequate for a sort of sport DK weight sweater. However, for me to be on the safe side, I kind of need about 1200 meters, but I'm not going to be deterred. I am still going to cast on a sweater with this. And shall I chat, shall I tell you about the sweater? Yeah, let's, let's go for it. I am going to cast on from a back issue of Pom Pom. This is issue number 30 from autumn 2019. This is the sea change issue and this is one of my favourite ever issues of Pom Pom. I think I'd be quite happy to knit pretty much anything. I think there's one project in here that is not really to my taste but everything else in here I would be quite happy to knit. But my plan is to knit the Astragal which is a pattern by Aina Birkimbaeva. 
I have no idea if I've pronounced that right and I'm sure that I haven't um, but it is a beautiful cropped sweater with a lovely pattern detail at the top so let me um, let the camera zoom in on that for a second so that's the astragal and as you can see from the pattern it has three quarter length sleeves so mine may end up being a short sleeve sweater uh, but I'm definitely going to just cast on with the bandon and see how far I get. I feel like modifying the sleeves to be a little bit shorter I like I love to wear a short sleeve sweater will give me enough wiggle room to hopefully get a reasonable sweater from the yarn that I've spun up and if not hey ho then I guess I'll rip it out and start on another project. <laughs> worst case scenario yeah <laughs> but I really wanted to knit with this yarn and I really want to cast this on soon so yeah that's the plan for my John Arben spin and I have started a little swatch yes I know not like me at all um, I just wanted to see how the yarn knit up at the needle size recommended in the pattern and it's knitting up really nicely there's my little swatch and the pattern is actually reverse stockinette so I should probably show you the other side because that's kind of what the sweater will end up looking like in the main and I just I somehow I just think the reverse stockinette is really lovely in hand spun yarn so yeah I'm looking forward to casting that on and seeing if I can get a wearable sweater from the quantity of yarn I've spun. The other thing that is kind of making me want to cast on with Abandon for that is that I know my method for measuring my hand spun is not very accurate. So oftentimes I think that I'm really close in terms of meterage for a pattern and I end up knitting the pattern and I have plenty of yarn. So I'm hoping, praying, <laughs> that that might be the case um, with this quantity of yarn that I've spun so yeah time will tell and then I have a couple of spins in progress to share with you um first on my spindles because you know I can't go too long without a spindle spun project I have been playing around on my blending board again and I'm trying to find I know that I bought it up what have I done with that I did have a complete right oh there it is so I was having a play on my blending board and I made up a just a really small set of Rolags inspired by my favourite bird, the oyster catcher. Uh, so I blended up some Corydale fibre and a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of sari silk um, into uh, a few Rolags that look like this. I have no idea what the finished yarn is going to look like. Obviously there's some very high contrast, the black and white colours with a little pop of orange, but I'm just having fun um, spinning through the Rolags on one of my support spindles. This was a spindle that James gifted me for my birthday and yeah it's spinning up really fun so that's one of my um, spins in progress. I have my Shetland ongoing project as well, I've been working on that a little bit. Nothing really new to show you if you want to uh, find out a little bit more about that project. I have a video here on YouTube, I think it's the last one that I posted, um, about my adventures with some wool combs and my intention to try and spindle spin a whole Shetland fleece. And then finally another spin in progress from my spinning cart a beautiful quantity of autumnal coloured fibres again another gift for my dear friend Caroline now I spun up some of this fibre she gifted me two lots of this fibre so this is fibre that I already spun and originally I thought I might make a set of wrist warmers or fingerless mitts from these beautiful colours and I think I mentioned this on a video and Caroline very generously sent me some more of this fiber and now because I've got some more I am thinking because I love these colors so much they're just so autumnal and so me I am wondering whether with the extra quantity I can get enough meterage for some color work in a color work yoke so I'm spinning through the second lot of fiber that Caroline sent me but I wanted to try and see if I could obviously spin the same kind of thickness. So in the second batch of fibre that Caroline gifted me, um, I got these three colours. Um, she didn't send any more of this one, but she did send a lighter brown. So I decided to start with the lighter brown because I, obviously my aim is to, in the main, use these three lovely colours. And 
as I say, I wanted just to practice spin to see if I could get roughly the same thickness. So I started with the, the sort of smaller quantity. And I'm happy to say I've almost got there. I think in parts this is slightly thicker than this, but it's not too far off at all. But I need to just measure this because I've got all of my measurements on here and just do a comparison. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm fairly close. I am going to embark on spinning the other colours this month. And I'm spinning that on my Haldane, my treadle wheel, um, because that's what I spun the original uh, fibre in. So yeah, that's going to be a fun project to see me through October. So that's everything for the making content. Um, I do have a bit of acquisitions to share with you. And the first is related to our gnome along. So I ordered some mini skeins. I think I mentioned in the last video that I'd ordered some mini skeins from Cartrev as prizes for the Gnome Along and they have arrived. So I've got, whoops, let's empty that out. I've got two sets of mini skeins to give away. Um, so this is the Cartrev logo and you can find Cartrev on Instagram, Ravelry and Facebook, all of the usual places. And I ordered two sets of minis from them. Um, so we have, let's get these in the right order, blue, so I have this set to give away in sort of traditional Nomi colours, so red, blue and the natural. And then I had a set, the colours that I picked out, a lovely green, a dark charcoal and the natural again. And the lovely Jenny and Zoe, who are the brains behind Cartrev, were so generous and they have also sent along two of their little uh, mini drawstring project bags. So. The winners of the mini skeins will get the set of mini skeins and one of the Cartrev bags. So thank you so much to Jenny and Zoe for that kind uh, generosity in donating the bags too. Um, I think that makes for a really lovely uh, couple of prizes. So I shall be looking forward to drawing those at the end of our cow. Um, so yeah, that will be happening sometime. Well, the cow ends on the 31st of October. So the draw will happen sometime at the beginning of November. I think at the start of the video, I alluded to the fact that I received a lovely package in the mail from one of our wonderful community members, Angela. And Angela reached out to me and said, could she donate a few bits of sock yarn for the West Midlands Ambulance Service? Um, and I said, yes, please, thank you. Um, so I have been knitting some of the quantities that Angela sent through and in the package that she sent, she also was so, so kind and generous and sent through a few gifts for me, which uh, you really didn't have to do, Angela, but so, so appreciated. Um, I won't show you everything. There's lots of lovely little bits and pieces, but I wanted to um, highlight a couple of beautiful yarns that Angela sent to me. Um, so first off, she sent me a gorgeous set of mini skeins from Bumbling Yarns, and I have never heard of Bumbling Yarns before. Oh, okay, so I'm slightly confused because the label says Bumbling Yarns. The website is craftersbalm.co.uk and then on the label it says Hand Dyed from the Lonely Knitter. So look at these absolutely beautiful mini skeins. Aren't they glorious? Uh, I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to add these to my crochet blanket or whether I might start a new blanket uh, this winter because my crochet blanket will be coming to an end soon or whether I will go for it and make myself a pair of scrappy socks. The possibilities are endless. The colours are beautiful. There's lovely greens and pinks and browns and some beautiful neutrals. So yeah, I'm going to be putting my thinking cap on and coming up with the perfect use. But whatever I decide to do, I know these are going to look absolutely beautiful. So thank you for that, Angela. She also sent me some other mini skeins that weren't labelled um, and also a beautiful skein of orange yarn. This is Sublime Isla and it's 50% cotton, 50% bamboo. And how Angela is that? <laughs> um, and again, I don't have a project in mind for this, but I shall definitely ruminate on this. It's 100 grams, so maybe a nice cowl for the summer with the cotton and bamboo content. Um, that could be a nice possibility. I think there's 220 meters, so that should be quite nice for a sort of summer cowl or a to sort of keep the chill off in um, sort of spring and summer evenings. So yeah, that that could be what happens with that. Uh, yarn. Right, that is absolutely everything for this month's roundup. I feel like it might be a long one. I've got quite a bit of editing ahead of me, I think, <laughs> through various interruptions and me running off to find various projects that I forgot to bring. And I will try my best to cut out as much of my waffle as possible. <laughs> 
um but yeah we shall see we shall see so all that remains to say is thank you so much for spending time with me today uh, don't forget to get all of your finished objects up on to various social medias or through to email for me if you're participating in the gnome along when I do the prize draw for the gnome along I'll also draw the prize for the third quarter of the 12 cast-ons because that sort of rounded up at the end of September so I need to do that as well please let me know in the comments below what you managed to finish in September or what you worked on and what you are working on throughout October I would love to know it's always a real pleasure and joy to chat to you in the comments I'm going to sign off for today so until we get to spend time together again I hope you get to do some of the things that you enjoy great big woolly hugs to you all bye for now <laughs>